Hello, I'm Matthew Turner from Enduring Domain Architecture. We're here today at Structural Panels Australia in Dalesford. And here is the manufacturing facility for SIPS wall panels. And currently the panels for our own home, which we're building in Smeeted, are being manufactured. So we're coming to check on the progress. Let's go and have a look. So obviously we are filming in COVID times and due to current restrictions, masks are required to be worn. And I'm just here in the factory today, just with Tibor, who was one of the owners, he's also the man behind the camera. So we're lucky enough to have a, a little bit of a, a tour through the facility and have a look at how our panels for our, our house are coming along. Probably the first thing is just to explain what a, what a SIP panel is. So SIP, SIP, SIP stands for Structural Insulated Panel. So if we go over here and have a bit of a closer look at some of the panels which are being made, we have a thick polystyrene core and we have on two sides glued to that polystyrene core is OSB board, which is oriented strand board, which is basically off cuts of timber, which are all fused together with all the pieces of wood going in different directions. It makes a very strong board. So they are facing both sides of the panel. And this is one section of the wall, which will be standing upright. We have all these different sized pieces and they all have a different number so that on site the builders will know in which order to place the panels. There's a couple of features that I can just show you with the panels. When the panels are joined together vertically, there's a rebate in the polystyrene core. And we use what's called a spline, and that's just an offcut of the OSB material, which actually just gets slid into place and then that gets screwed through the face of the wall panel here. So there'll be one of those on either side in here as well. And then the next panel that comes along will slot into that and will be screwed through from the side as well. So with the panels for our house, we've gone for a 165 mil panel. So that's the total thickness of the panel. With that thickness of panel, that gives us an R value of 4.5 for winter performance and R4.2 for summer performance. To give you a comparison, a conventional stud framed home in Australia uses a 90 mil stud wall, which at the most will fit an R2.5 insulation bat. So to get something comparable to R4.5, you'd have to do say a double stud wall. And this is something that I've done in the past. It's quite a good system, except in our current climate, we have a little bit, a bit of an issue with uh, timber supply. So using twice as much stud framing for your walls is probably not um, a viable, viable option at the moment. One of the advantages of these panels is it uses substantially less timber framing than a conventional stud framed building. So instead of having a vertical stud every 450 millimetres, we just have vertical studs wherever there's a window or a door opening. We have lintels across door and window openings like in a normal building, but they are completely faced with polystyrene. So there's very few thermal bridges or thermal weak points in the building envelope. There's insulation almost everywhere externally in the building. What we have laid out on the floor here is actually the east facade of our building. So you can see the outline of the pitched roof and we've got two large window openings. So when we've got more complicated shapes where we have angles, uh, say in a, in a gable end wall, um, to make sure that everything is exactly as it should be um, per the design, laying it out on the floor like this and getting everything cut on the right angle before everything's glued together 
is just a bit of quality control. It's no secret that in Australia at the moment during this COVID pandemic, there is an issue with supply of timber. There are nationwide timber shortages and prices are also going up. So what I like about this method of building is it does use quite a lot less timber. So we can see with the OSB board, that is the extent of the wall silhouette, if you like. So where we have these voids between the edge of the OSB and the polystyrene core, these are the locations where we're going to be having structural timber. So we have a bottom plate which sits on the bottom of the slab as per a conventional home. And then at this window opening, we have a double stud either side of the opening. So that's all the timber that we have in this particular location. There won't need to be any more upright timber until we have the next window opening over there. In between, it's solid polystyrene core, which is solid insulation, no weak points in the thermal envelope. This is an example of the shop drawings. So these are the diagrams that they're making that they can actually manufacture the panels from. All the different elements are color coded. So we can see where top plates are going, where bottom plates are going, where other vertical timber members are going. We can see the dimensions of the panel. Um, ideally, panel widths are suited to the sheet sizes that the OSB comes in, which is 1200 wide. Uh, so minimizing waste is also very important. Um, one thing I should point out with the design of my own home, we did not initially have uh, SIPS panels in mind at the outset of designing that home. So that was something that we converted the, the design to afterwards, but perhaps um, dimensions of the walls and window openings weren't necessarily ideally suited to using um, full panels and minimizing wastage. So that's definitely something that I would do next time is just to establish early on uh, in a design for a home with a client, how do you want to build your home? And if you're interested in working with SIPs, let's uh, determine that early on and try and design the building around the module sizes just to get the most efficiency out of the product. So far, we've looked at wall panels. The wall panels have the two skins of OSB. That same product, product can also be used for floors. But the other thing that structural panels make are roof panels. So the major difference here is instead of the OSB skins, we have metal roofing. So this is literally corrugated iron roofing that you get from Lysart or, or Colorbond in a range of colors and different profiles. And then they are glued against the polystyrene core. Our house will have a combination of the SIPS wall panels and also some of these, um, they're, they're called tri-deck roof panels, um, but we have a concrete slab floor. So we're not using any, any of the SIPS for the floor. In terms of the thickness of the polystyrene core, the thicker the panel, not only will it span further, but obviously also get more insulation value. So something of this thickness is around about R6. R6 is what I would put in a roof uh, in central Victoria as, as a minimum. But again, with the wall panels, this is a continuous layer of insulation. So uh, we don't have any gaps that you have when you're putting um, roof bats in between trusses and having blankets draped over roof battens and things like that where there's lots of gaps. So this is gonna give you a much more continuous layer of insulation, fewer gaps and better air tightness. As all the panels are manufactured here to order, everything is made to suit exactly the design of the building which it's going to. So any wastage, any off cuts are not being created on the building site. Uh, the wastage is created here in a factory. So it's much easier to control what happens to that waste so we can see here 
This is all excess polystyrene. It gets bagged up and can be sent back to where it came from and be reused and recycled. Likewise with the OSB, any offcuts can be used for connecting splines. They can be used in the home for window reveals or anything else like that. Um, packers, so very little wastage. We've had a look at how the wall panels have been made. We've had a look at the roof panels. Our job lot is almost ready to go. So hopefully later in the week, these will all be lifted onto the back of a truck, delivered to our site about 20 minutes from here. The slab is ready. The walls can be fitted uh, onto their bottom plates. The roof erected all very quickly. So when the, the building shell is at lockup and it's waterproof, builders and other trades can be getting on with jobs inside and outside and the process should be quite quick from there on.